So let's talk about those overhead types of service entrances and their related components. These types would be connected to a transformer mounted up on the power pole adjacent to the property um, with the wires coming in over the property like we just mentioned. Where it might meet a meter mast, which may also be referred to as a service mast possibly, um, even a service riser, you might hear that. Some general characteristics of this type would include that the, the mast, which you know, really is just a pipe, you know, could be a conduit, um, as it's often called, could be made up of galvanized steel. Um, some instances, I guess it could be PVC plastic. Um, knowing the material is probably gonna be important if you're estimating it though. It may or may not go above the roof line. And here we're now showing both types. Um, many times it's used to gain height, you know, for those wires that have to cross over roads and driveways and things like that. Um, we're going to provide more information on those uh, heights that are required here shortly. Um, it may also um, penetrate the roof, or it may not. Okay. Um, of course, it would require more work to replace it if it does penetrate the roof, as represented in that photo there on the right. Then we have what's known as the weatherhead, which is usually the same material as a mass, but not always. It's just designed to keep the weather out, mostly water. Uh, that equals rain, right? Um, notice that close-up of that photo there on the left. Those wires in that weatherhead, they've been there a long time. They're not in very good condition, are they? You can actually see, they've worn right through and you can actually see them. And uh, just to note, to replace either of those, you're gonna need to disconnect from the street power or the grid, because um, the wires go through those components. And in cases like that, the utility company will normally get involved to disconnect those wires. Next, let's talk about another type of overhead service entrance. This type is referred to as direct applied or trunk line, which is also often referred to as surface entrance or to make that short, SE cable. In this case, conduit's not needed as that cable sheathing is watertight. It's attached directly to the siding of the home. These direct applied applications do not ever go above the roof line because there's nothing really to hold them up there, right? They can only go as the highest point on the building. Now we'll talk about the connection of the utility wires to the home's electrical system. These connections are commonly made using split bolt connectors, which are referred to by the electrician slang often as the bugs, right? Aptly named because they're wrapped in that black electrical tape and they look like small black bugs or beetles, right? All right, now we're going to use this great graphic and uh, make a few key points about those overhead uh, service drops again. Notice that we have the two differing types or applications, one being with a mast reaching above the roof line shown there on the left, and the other one below the roof line there on the right, okay? With either type and per code in most jurisdictions, a drip loop is required to make sure that water sheds from those wires and does not travel down the wires into the meter mast. And note, for the example on the right, that scenario could be accomplished using direct applied trunk line um, or SE cable, right? And that doesn't, wouldn't necessarily have to be a mast in that case. Okay, now let's find out just how high these wires need to be to meet most uh, jurisdictional electric codes. So in most jurisdictions, this chart would apply, but be sure to always check in your area. Generally, all wires crossing over driveways need to be a minimum of 12 feet overhead. Also note some of those other clearances uh, on that 18 feet over a roadway and either eight or 10 feet over a flat roof. <laughs> and that's depending on whether that area is used as a walkway, patio, or a deck. So to clarify that last point I just made on the chart here, it says eight feet over a roof, right? Um, that raises up to 10 feet if that roof surface is walkable or used as a walkway, patio, deck space, or something like that, as seen in that graphic now. So hopefully that helps out. All right, now we are moving on and going and to do a quick review of what is different when that power comes in under underground to the property. Okay, this type would be connected to one of those, they're normally green, um, ground transformers, usually either on the property or within two to three houses away. And those wires are buried underground and rise up to the meter base in a protected conduit, which might be either steel, again, or PVC plastic. You're, again, you're gonna need to know that material type. Probably also need to know the diameter and the length if you're gonna be estimating it properly. So a quick note about this particular installation you're looking at in this photo, it might not be up to code. 
is this meter, meter base is very low for some reason. In most jurisdictions, we find the height of a meter base would need to be a minimum of 48 inches above the ground. So you might have to deal with that if this was your claim. In these underground installations, the wire connections from the utility power lines to the home are located inside that meter base, as seen here as we show uh, one of these boxes opened up and the electric meter is actually removed. So in this case, there's no bugs, right? Um, we, we, you know, we'll talk about this meter base more uh, shortly coming up um, and talk about all the uh, components, but no bugs here, connects directly inside the meter base.